My guest today is Mauricio Martinez, an Emmy-winning actor and Broadway star and recording artist whose work spans film, television, albums, even concerts, plays, and of course, musicals. Now, he made his Broadway debut playing Cuban hit maker and producer Emilio Estefan in On Your Feet, the story of Emilio and Gloria Estefan on Broadway and its first national tour. Now, Mauricio is a household name in Mexico and Latin America and can also be seen in two seasons of NBC's Universal's original Emmy-winning TV series, El Vato, on Netflix. And Mauricio released his brand new album, Live in New York City, a collection of iconic show tunes. Live from New York City is his first live album, produced by Robbie Roselle from Mauricio's live performance at 54 Below. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Broadway star, Emmy-winning actor, and recording artist, Mauricio Martinez, to the show. Welcome. Hi. 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 How are you? I'm so uh, excited to be connected with you today. Thank you for having me. It is great to have you on the show today. And I must ask, you know, you were so extremely talented. How did you find yourself in the world of entertainment? Well, I mean, I think my mom's pretty much responsible for it um, because she, ever since I could remember, she would used to play me movie, movie musicals, Hollywood musicals as I was a kid growing up. I remember watching um, Grease and um, Sound of Music, Hello Dolly. And little did I know that most of these um, movies came from the theater and that um, from a place called Broadway and that Broadway was in, in New York. Uh, so that that made me so happy when I found out that it, they came from the theater. And um, yeah, I just snowballed from there little by little. I started taking singing classes, acting lessons. And uh, by the time I reached 18, I was already living here in New York. And um, the rest, as you say, is history. Yeah. <laughs> so did you get your start in theater? Yes, yes. I, I started doing uh schools when I was uh, a teenager in high school. And uh, yeah, theater has always been my my favorite. Um, there's nothing like theater. Um, I fell in love with it at an early age and I've been in love with it ever since. Yeah. Well, with being a, a Broadway star, um, is it more challenging to be uh, acting on Broadway versus being on television or film? Well, I think every medium is different. You know, um, the beauty of theater is that, I mean, I love the, the rehearsal process because you're um, in, in a group uh, for like, I want to say six weeks, seven to six weeks together putting up the show. And that's my favorite part. But once the show opens, then you just know that you're doing your job at night or two show days. You have uh, two shows, but you know where you're going to where you're going to be. You know, you know, you're going to be at the theater at seven and you'll be done at 10. And you have the rest of the day off and you got to take care of yourself, you know, take care of your voice, of your instrument, you know, work out, eat healthy, meditate, all that. But with TV and film, you you don't really have a schedule, you know, um, you're there in your camper on or on location uh, for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours waiting. Um, there was this very famous and prestigious Mexican actor. His name was Hector Bonilla, and he had a great phrase that I loved. Um, he said in in film and television they pay you to wait acting is mere pleasure and that's the that's the truth i think you know so it's very different um of course the end result is great you know it's great to see yourself on on screen and you reach a lot of people but i don't i believe that the magic of theater is irreplaceable you know theater you're in a in a dark room with strangers you know uh for two or three hours and you're transported to a different world and you enter into this world and um it's live uh, there. So um, the, 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 the energy that, that is created in a live performance. That's why I love uh, it's unbeatable. That's why I love theater so much theater and concerts. You know, I love the live experience. I love having an audience and um, the adrenaline that, that you, you go through. It's, well, it's there's very that you have that energy to play off of the, the audience and the audience's response where you don't really, you don't have that at all when it comes to television or even film. But of course, with, with yeah. certain television, did you ever perform in any of these series before a, a live 
audience? I mean, I've never done like a sitcom per se, um, but I did. I mean, I did um, the equivalent of Mexican Idol back in um, 2002. So I did like concerts on television. I've done award shows. I've done live performances. So even here, I did the Kennedy Honors uh, to honor my dear Gloria Stefan. I did um, uh, some shows, you know, like the talk with an audience, you know, and it's always great. I think it's always better to have an audience, you know. Um, I live off of it. It's it's exciting to me, and I'm that's where I'm the most comfortable. I think. Yeah, I think you can't beat a live audience. But you sing, yeah. you act, you do theater, yeah. television, and film. Is there anything that you can't do? <laughs> uh, well, uh, <laughs> I can't drive a sports car. That's for sure. I only drive automatic, so I, I don't know how to drive. Um, what do you call it here in America? Stick uh, stick, shift? Uh, a manual or stick shift? Yeah, stick shift. I can't even turn the car on, which is pretty embarrassing at my age. But that's something I can't do. <laughs> um, uh, I can't. I can't ride a plane. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so, I, I, I so if you master. get cast in in the next Fast and Furious movie, I guess they're gonna have to give you an automatic. There was this, uh, funny you mentioned that, because there was my first telenovela ever back in 2003. Um, I played um, a very rich guy who had a sports car, but I told the production in advance, like I only drive automatic and they knew that. So of course, first day of shooting, they arrived with this stick shift car. And I went, guys, I can't drive that. I told you like months ago. So we maneuvered it like the director um, <laughs> went in, uh, created this, like he was, uh, he was um, pushing the pedal with his hands and it was like crazy, but we made it, we made it happen. We made the scene happen. <laughs> you know, it's amazing what, what can be done um, in film and, and just make it look real. So uh, yes. I, I, I love that story. It, it's, it's funny here, you know, even in America, our big joke is, is your, your best theft deterrent for your car is to buy a stick shift because nobody knows how to drive them anymore. There you go. Nobody knows how to drive them anymore. And I'm one of them. Sorry. <laughs> well, I guess if you live in New York City, you really don't need a car. That's the beauty of New York. I love New York because obviously many things, but that's um, one of the beauties of living in New York is that you don't really need a car. You know, I, I take the subway, I walk, I ride the bike on pretty days. Um, yeah, it's pretty relaxing to get that uh, burden off, you know, you don't need to worry about the car. I lived in Mexico city for 15 years and, um, I always compare Mexico city to LA cause they're so similar, you know, uh, you're stuck in traffic all day long, but you really need a car to get around. Uh, and it's not like that in New York. I love that, um, lifestyle of just walking and using the subway, using the bus. I love, that's why I love New York. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm, gosh, it's been decades. Um, been to Monterey, Mexico, my hometown. Yay. <laughs> beautiful city but the biggest thing that made us laugh was that at night we would hear all of these screeching tires but no one ever crashed and we laughed about it because we kept waiting and uh then then we you know uh, back in that we would sneak out of the hotel and then we would go and take one of the carriage rides in in the downtown area which is probably one of the biggest things that I remember about being in Monterey, but it's it's a gorgeous city. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm very lucky to be from there. I think it's a great city. Um, yeah, it's it's. I have wonderful memories. I'm actually going back on my birthday this year, May 23rd, to do my concert, which is um, very exciting. I'm, I'm I'll be back there at home where it all started um, almost 30 years ago, um, celebrating. Um, a milestone birthday and and it's exciting to be back home and um give back to well the city that um gave me life and gave me everything that's where it all started so it's nice to be back to go back to basics go back home and 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 hopefully inspire new audiences you know that is amazing now i listened to your album live in new york and okay. One of the most favorite parts of that album is when you're talking to the audience. Okay. Well, and I, I love that. <laughs> and I really, and I started laughing. It, it, it made me laugh because you have this incredible sense of humor. And you mentioned, I believe you mentioned Mexican television. Yes. Uh, 
How do you go into Mexican television and how do you overact? <laughs> well, I used to do telenovelas for a living. And for those of, uh, who don't know what a telenovela is, it's basically a soap opera in, in Spanish with uh, way more overacting, you know, bigger hair, bigger costumes, more cleavage. Uh, all the men are shirtless and um, it's very passionate, very dramatic. And of course, I played villains for over 10 years. So um, I pushed a lot of people down the stairs and slapped a lot of people, which was fun because <laughs> I don't get to do that in real life. Uh, but it's part of our culture, you know, I, um, especially back then, you know, I, um, back in the 2000s, obviously 90s and 80s, uh, telenovelas were huge, you know, now with streamers and everything, I think that's definitely changed. Um, uh, but they're still out there, you know, we're still doing just like here in America, you still have um, Days of Our Lives and, you know, uh, shows like that, The Young and the Restless, we still have telenovelas. The only difference is that in Mexico, they last four to six months or eight months. Um, whereas here, the soap operas just go on and on and on and on and on and on. Over there, you can pretty much have a career doing telenovelas. But I started that. I, I started like that. And it was fun. It paid my bills for 10 years. And it also, um, television is magical. And uh, specifically, Spanish television is so powerful. You know, I've, I've been blessed to travel all over the world. Um, and being recognized in other countries, um, like such as Europe, you know, I mean, being like in Spain, in Italy, in France, here in, in the States, in New York, and people stopping you on the subway or in a restaurant asking for a picture because they saw you in a Mexican telenovela in Spanish is pretty wild, you know, uh, and it speaks volumes of the power of television, you know, television, it is that magic box that reaches millions and millions of people in instance uh, that's the big difference between television and theater you know um theater lives here in in your mind uh for whoever has the opportunity to be uh in a theater and and witness a performance that can change your life whereas television lives forever for posterity it's always there and now with streaming and now with youtube uh, television is there you know and lives forever well, I'll tell you this. I learned this from a friend of mine who, gosh, I think his television career, directing career, mm -hmm. probably spanned, gosh, 50, 60 years. Okay. And he told me it was Desi Arnaz mm -hmm. who was the, was the one that thought far ahead. And when they were shooting the Lucy show, he said, I want to film it on 35 millimeter. Which is mm. which was never been done at that time. They were using, I think it was uh, the kinescope and these four right. lens type old cameras. But when you filmed a series, you really couldn't save the footage. But Desi right. wanted to film it in thirty five millimeter. And if he was the one that set the stage, that when yeah. you did that, that's where syndication was born. Yes, he was brilliant. We owe we owe a lot to him, and he's. A proud Latino, you know, a Latino came and changed, um, came to America and changed, revolutionized the um, television. That speaks of about this country also. Um, I love the diversity that we live here in this country, and um, that's why I'm here. And it's through people like that, you know, like Desi Arnaz. I mean, another one is Emilio Stefan, who I had the pleasure of not only playing, but become his friend. And he's been um, some sort of like a father figure, a mentor, and I truly respect and love him. Um, and he revolutionized the music industry, too. Um, so, uh, yeah, it makes me very proud to hear those stories, you know, about Desi Arnaz, about Emilio, about Gloria, Selena, you know, um, it's uh, Julio Iglesias. You know, I grew up and, and my mom, I remember my mom and my aunts would just like were in love with him. And he was one of the very first ones who recorded in both languages, you know, English and Spanish. And that spoke volumes to me. And I think it's growing up listening to artists like that, such as Julio Iglesias and Gloria Estefan, uh, later on Selena, um, really, and this is before Ricky Martin and J-Lo and Mark Anthony and Shakira and Enrique Iglesias. This is like decades before. It really um, is a reflection of what I do today. You know, I grew up listening to these artists and ve was very inspired by them because I too was growing up with both cultures, being Mexican, but being in Monterrey. Monterrey is such an American city, Americanized city. And I was going to private school, learning English, and we have cable. So I, I grew up watching both Mexican television and American television, listening to both American 
or should I say music in English and music in Spanish. Uh, so I grew up with both cultural cultures. You know, I, I consider myself more than being bilingual. I consider myself to be bicultural in a way. Well, uh, yeah. And, you know, you bring up the, the Este Stefans and Estefans, Gloria. Yeah. Gloria raised the bar when it came to pop music with a Latin flavor, which still sure today did. has never been touched or duplicated. I mean, we have Jennifer Lopez. We have Christina Aguilera. Neither yeah. one of them even touch what Gloria has done. Yeah, and well, we and they worked with, with both of them, with Gloria and Emilio, you know. Um, uh, I think, I mean, you, you do say, you're saying something very um, true, you know. I think... Um, she set the bar really high, and I don't think there's ever been anyone who who've, who's come near um, to the trailblazer that she was. And still yeah, is. because I look you know. at, I've seen, I have, my gosh, I've interviewed so many recording artists, so yeah. many filmmakers, actors, but, and it was funny, uh, right before our interview, I was interviewing a Latin American filmmaker. And about okay. how that community is still a bit underserved mm -hmm. and trying to break the stereotypes that a lot of directors and producers put the Latin community in here yeah. in television and film where that needs to be, those stereotypes need to be broken. Oh, what yeah. I love about Gloria Stefan she brought the Latin flavor into pop music. Mm -hmm. And I, and even, even with the rise and the changes in, in the country music genre, every once in a while you would get, you know, I'll tell you the truth, I don't think the last country recording artist, well, probably Johnny Rodriguez is probably one of the last that I even remember. Mm -hmm. And we need more of that. In, in multiple music genres, because like with you, you brought up the fact that you're known in many different countries around the world. And and that usually happens with, uh, you know, Spanish speaking actors and entertainers. They're more wide. They can reach that global audience because so many different countries have Spanish as their national language. But it's also a little bit off of an offshoot with the Italians. Uh, and the French. So there's this international flavor, this international, well, there's not even a really a language barrier there. So yeah, your star rises far above many others in the same entertainment business. And the beauty of it is that, um, as you say, you, you said, well, Spanish is spoken in so many different uh, countries, not only Latin America, but Europe and, you know, and Spanish is getting stronger and stronger. Uh, and the fact that now there's artists that, don't even record in English, you know, they, they, I mean, one of the biggest selling artists in the world now is uh, records in Spanish, only in Spanish, you know, and uh, that speaks volumes um, to the power of Spanish. And also to the, um, the, the truth is that um, music and art trespasses the language barriers, you know, uh, barriers. I, I think um, that's very important. Uh, so, but it is because of people like Gloria, you know, uh, people like Julio, they, they were the trailblazers, um, uh, Selena, obviously, I mean, she, her life was cut short, but she's definitely a trailblazer as well. She lives on. And I think, has well, do us. you believe, do you believe that if Selena would have lived that she, her star, Oof. I'm, I was enough to see her been, at that during that time. Yeah. She would have been bigger than Beyonce and Taylor Swift is now. Oh yeah, I mean she she was on her way to become one of the biggest entertainers in the world. You know, she had so much charisma, so much talent. Um, she was a a powerhouse, and the, the energy that she had on stage. You know, she was a natural dancer. Never took dancing lessons, but she had the perfect line. Uh, never took voice lessons, but she had so much soul and so much heart, and. Um, yeah, I mean the fact that they she there is not a Mexican wedding where you're not listening to what well, as soon as Elena comes in, people get on that dance floor and dance and sing her songs and um, it's been 
almost 30 years since she um, left us and she still, I mean, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that, Yeah, I, and I, I hear that, that it's what Selena Gomez is going to be playing her in a new biopic. Is what oh, I'm I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know this. Well, she has the right name for it. Oh, no, no, right? no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no. Selena is going to be playing Linda Ronstadt in the biopic. Oh, see, that's more fitting. Yeah, yeah. that's more fitting. Well, actually, didn't Jennifer Lopez already play Selena? J-Lo's performance of Selena. She really hit the spot. She was perfect. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> let me ask you something. It's been 10 years since your last album, why did you uh, take so long to do another one? Oh, yeah, because I'm an independent artist and because life um, got in the way and my acting got in the way in a way, you know, I moved to America, I moved to New York, I made my Broadway debut. Um, uh, I went through cancer. I'm a four time cancer survivor. I went through um, my fourth diagnosis of, of bladder cancer. So I had to fight um, for my life and uh, just life, you know, I, I, I wasn't ready for um, for another album. I, I, my albums are very personal, you know, I, and I felt that the right next step was to do for a first of all, a, an album in English, because that's the language that I mostly work in now. And to do a Broadway album, because that's what I mostly do now and to do it live because that's what i mostly do now you know and especially for all the fans and followers that have been with me um from the start that sometimes they don't they can't afford a ticket to come to new york and see me in a broadway show or in a concert um so it's also for them i take a little bit of new york and broadway to them uh via this album it's very personal but yeah it's been 10 years a lot has happened since um, but I'm very proud of, of every album, obviously, but this one speaks differently because I'm in a mo much more mature uh, state in my life and, um, I produced it and it's live. It's unedited. Like you say, uh, I love that you said that one of your favorite parts is the speaking because we decided to leave it like that because what's the point of recording a live album if it's, uh, the experience is not going to be, um, being with us in the room, you know, like just, uh, I hope people open a glass of wine. I mean, open a bottle of wine and, um, listen to, to this album, just like as if you were here with me at 54 below, you know, um, in a nightclub watching me perform and laughing at my jokes or getting emotional at some nostalgic story that I share. It's very, very personal. So, um, and that's, that's what I love. That's what I loved about this album. You have 21 tracks on this album, <laughs> but yeah. you mixed it between half music yes, and the other half to storytelling. And it speaks I, about who I am, you know, I'm an actor and a singer, you know, so I do both. Yeah. But, <laughs> and this is, and, and you bring up the perfect point because that's why I, I love the album. It is a true live album in every sense of the word. Because like you said, many live albums, it's just the songs that are live. You never right. hear anybody either talking or maybe they're going to tell the backstory of a particular song. But your album is is a pure joy to listen to because, like I said, you are so funny. The stories <laughs> are great. And, uh, and what really got me laughing was... As I was listening to the album, you were talking about self-tape auditions. Are you still doing those? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, that's the premise of my whole show. You know, that's um, when we transported the, the live show to the album. Um, that's why we named it Live in NYC, you know, because um, if we named it, the show is called 511 based in New York you know, which is different. That's, that's the slate. For those of you who don't know what a slate is, basically, um, when you do a self tape or an audition via um, video, you have to start with a slate. And what is a slate, you have to say your name, where you're based and your height. Um, so that's why Mauricio Martinez 511 based in New York, and then you uh, go off and start singing or um, doing a scene. And I basically um share everything we go through um 
uh, in our living rooms with the noises, living in a city like New York with the neighbors and the traffic and the ambulances, and all of a sudden you're in the middle of a scene and because um, mostly most uh, self tapes are done with the, with the, with your phone with your smartphone and all of a sudden you get a phone call or your voice cracks or uh, the power goes out I mean everything happens everything and of course now we are actors nowadays we're our own director our own acting coach our own makeup artist our own wardrobe our own hair um, dresser uh, our own everything I, I, we edit it we I mean it's a lot. And we go through a lot. So I wanted to put that in the show because it is what we are as actors are doing and have been doing ever since the pandemic, you know, and it's, they're still going on. Um, some of us don't necessarily love it because I don't, I, I believe in the, the power of walking into a room and having people there. I love that experience. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You really, you really like that. Because that that is so funny that you said that. Because I'm I've, better. I think I'm better at in person auditions than self tapes. That is so funny because I've done <laughs> self tapes. Yeah, and I hate them. And <laughs> so, and, and yesterday I was talking with an actress, and, uh -huh. and and I asked her the same question. I go, so what do you like better? Do you like doing self tapes? Or do you like doing in person auditions? She goes, oh no, self tapes every single yeah, a time that. a lot of actors think that because um you get multiple chances to do a takes over and over but see i get tired of that i'm a one take kind of guy because i do theater and i'm a live performer so i'm used to being ready and just go for it you know um whereas it gets tricky it gets tricky when you get so many chances and um you can get you can get into this vicious cycle i don't know it's it's weird and also you have to get readers all the time i live by myself so you gotta ask people, friends, um, family members, and it, it gets it gets tiring, you know? I, I think I'm ready to go back in the room. Um, but obviously it's very convenient for the industry. I think it saves a lot of time and money. So there, there are obviously um, positive things to that, but um, I miss in-person auditions. Uh, like I say, I think I'm better at those. Um, I'm trained for those. So is that in person? So is it? Well, yeah, yes. you are because you're, you're a, you're a seasoned theater actor. So going into a room in front of a director and producers and a casting agent. Yeah. I, I can see that. that with you. Whereas in, in for self tapes, I mean, it makes sense for TV or film because ultimately the end result is going to be you behind a camera. So it makes perfect sense for it to be a self tape. You know, um, the only, the only, um, I don't want to say negative because it's not negative, but the only thing that I, I lack with a self tape is direction, you know, uh, or to get notes in the room. Sometimes you're, whereas if you're in the room with the directors or the creative teams or casting directors, they can give you notes right away and you can change and you can adapt. Whereas here, you're just doing it like what you think is the best option and you send it you know um because yeah because you because doing self-tapes we're having to create the the feeling or the vibe we think that character or what they yeah. think that or what they're wanting to look for in that character and there's nothing there to actually i mean there there's going to be little notes on there that they tell you but like yeah. you said it's not enough to no. I guess make it better. So it's a shot in the dark. Uh, some, but yeah, are, for well, it's okay because you're in New York City. Are <laughs> are there productions that are still doing in person auditions? There are some. I mean, there are some, but most of all, most of them, the first round is a self tape. Like you first self tape, and then if you get a callback, then you go into an in person audition. But most auditions, at least in my case have the first round, even if it's theater, um, it's it's a self tape. Um, so yeah, I think it's a double edged sword, but I mean, they're here to stay. So might as well enjoy them. And you know, uh, even if you're tired of them, I'm tired, I'm certainly tired of them, you know, but it's 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 part of it. It's part of what we do. Yeah, um, not my favorite it, thing. A lot of work. It is a lot of work. It, it, it is. Now, how did you yeah. go about choosing the songs for your live album? Well, that was easy because um, some are self tapes that I did do and some are made up and they're just songs that I wanted to sing. Uh, some are songs that I've already 
play characters that I've already played um, on musicals, in musicals. But um, yeah, it was uh, between me and Robbie Rozelle. Robbie Rozelle is my um, co-producer and co-writer of the show and director of the show and co-producer of the album. Uh, so between him and I, we created this set list of dream roles and um, it was pretty, it was pretty easy, you know. Um, these are songs that I've always wanted to sing. Uh, we and we introduced two medleys, like the villain medley, um, which is a lot of fun. Characters that I, since I've played villains in telenovelas for many years, I was like, well, why not now, um, as a decree maybe um, or a wish list, do a medley of my favorite Broadway villains, you know and. Uh, uh, the other uh, medley is the Latin medley, because obviously these are roles that I've played, uh, like Don Quixote de la Mancha and Man of La Mancha, like um, Che from Evita, you know, and others that I would love to play, like Valentin in Kiss of the Spider Woman, you know. Uh, so it was perfect because it's it's almost like a wish list for me. Um, Billy Flynn in Chicago, Scar in Lion King, um, uh, King George in Hamilton. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of roles that I'd love to play. Um, so why not have a recording of it? It, you know, it may my agents or managers may, might just send the track now um, instead of a self tape. Who knows? <laughs> well, okay, you recorded the album. Did y'all film it? We did. We have it filmed. Um, I've released a couple of, of videos on my social media um, and channels, but um, yeah, we did film it. Um, we, 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 we're not going to sell it or anything, but we do. We, we did film it. Um, and we're well, very proud of it. Yeah. Well, I yeah. was going to ask if, if there was going to be a release of a possible uh, TV special if you had filmed it. Well, that's that'd be amazing. Maybe in the in the future, I don't I don't say no to that. Um, it won't be this one specifically because of rights and like Fifty Four Below and all that. But in the future, I would love that. That's another dream of mine, you know, to be able to release a concert uh, via video in um, on a streaming platform would be a dream, you know. Yeah, and I, I well, after listening to the album, y y you're perfect for it. I mean, oh, well, from from in your incredible voice, your stage presence, uh, the funny stories, I would watch <laughs> that special. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I'm very proud of the show. I'm very proud of the album. And uh, it's doing really well. We've reached over 40,000 streams in, in a month. And uh, for that, for an independent uh, album is is um, really, really, really good, you know, and, and especially for a live album of covers, you know, of songs that people already know. It's not a, a, a new... Um, it's not a new album, so we're very pleased. Uh, people are listening, people are downloading it, people are streaming it, commenting, and um, I couldn't be more grateful because it is a, an act of love. You know, we we it is a product of love. We did it with all my heart. I, I produced it, and it's a dream come true. And the fact that people are enjoying it makes me even more happy. Well, it's an incredible album, Mauricio. And you brought up earlier that you are a four time bladder cancer survivor how long have you been in remission well this is i crossed the five-year mark thank god um the last time i was diagnosed was in 2018 so it's been five and a half years now so i must be doing something right well do you have <laughs> any advice for those who are going through cancer right now yeah to not give up and to ask for other um second or third or fourth opinions you know i, I believe in that i believe in listening to other doctors opinions because one doctor's method um, or way of thinking or solving problems may be very different to another one. Um, so ask for more opinions and um, don't give up. You know, I, I mean, it's it's it, cancer is hard enough as it is, but um, it is possible. I am living proof that you can survive, um, that you can survive it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not easy, but it is possible, you know. It, it is. It's very yeah, don't don't panic. Right. It's important to to also to do a cleanse of your life. You know, um, it's it's moments like that where you really have to think hard of what um, where you are in life, and and instead of asking yourself um, why why me ask yourself 
um, other questions, you know, um, like, how can I grow from this? How can I learn from this? How can I become a better person um, with this, through this? You know, uh, I've certainly tried. Again, it's not easy. Um, every story is different. Every diagnosis is different. But um, that's why I believe in early detection and I promote it. And I always tell people, especially men, you know, um, women are more used to it. Uh, women are more, I think, used to going to the doctor um, than men. Um, I tell guys, go to the doctor. You, you might be looking great on the outside, but there might be um, an internal battle that you can't see um, on the inside. So if you feel like there's something wrong, go to the doctor, you know, and um, insurance, man. I always tell people, oof, invest in that. Trust me, invest in that because um, it's not it's not easy and it's not um, it's not cheap. Yeah, um, so. it's it's not cheap at all. And wise yeah. words from Mauricio Martinez. Now, where can everyone get your live in New York album? Well, you can get it uh, wherever music uh, is streamed on all the platforms, iTunes, Apple Music, um, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, obviously Spotify. It's everywhere. And I am very pleased. Uh, it's only digital. We haven't released a, a, a physical album because I, I mean, we did a, a investigation pretty much and not a lot of people nowadays have CD players anymore. So, uh, which made me kind of sad. But uh, who knows? Maybe in the future I'll release uh, a physical CD. You know. Well, but, you know, uh, vinyl is now a billion dollar a year business. I know. Maybe I'll release it vinyl. Maybe go old school, right? Yeah. Yeah, go <laughs> old school, and then that way you can. So when you do the autograph, you can write bigger on it. Exactly. <laughs> bigger letters. <laughs> well, what's next for you in 2024? Well, I just released another album um, that last Friday uh, of, of a new musical that's headed to the West End. It's called Figaro, and it's an original musical that I have the honor and privilege of uh, giving voice to the lead character named Figaro. It's a great, great, great romantic, passionate score. Um, it's almost like Phantom of the Opera meets Moulin Rouge. Uh, it's a, a love triangle, and Figaro is an amazing role. We just released the album. We had a concert on Monday. I have a couple of concerts, not a couple. I have many concerts, thankfully, lined up for the next months. Um, and, I mean, that's as far as I can, uh, I can share right now. That's what's in the horizon. But I'm promoting the album, doing lots of concerts, and obviously as an actor, auditioning, doing readings. I just finished a... Uh, a reading of a wonderful play and I'm um, doing another one in a couple of weeks and living, living the dream, you know, and, and the hustle of New York. <laughs> well, where can all of the, uh, all of your fans and new fans uh, find you online? Yes. Well, um, Instagram is pretty easy. It's at Martinez Mao, uh, which is short for Mauricio. And I'm also on Facebook and I'm on um, YouTube. I'm everywhere. Twitter. Well, now they call it X. Um, but Instagram is my favorite, I think. I think I also have TikTok, uh, but I believe that TikTok's for kids, right? Uh, but um, I, Instagram's my favorite. You know, you can post videos, you can post pictures, and um, I, I like Instagram. Um, but yeah, that's that's where you can find me. I'm everywhere, and wherever music is streamed, I'm I'm there. You know, and, and take a take a look at my other albums. They're in Spanish, but those are. Um, my origin story in a way you know and uh, if you like spanish pop latin pop um you there's other two albums there that you, that you can download and hopefully you'll make part of the soundtrack of your lives hey i love that and ladies and gentlemen mauricio martinez brand new <laughs> album live in new york city it is literally worth your time to sit down and as like mauricio said pop open a bottle of wine sit yes. back Listen, enjoy. I will promise you this. His album will bring a smile to your face. You you will sing along. You will laugh along with the audience. It is a stellar album. Buy, buy it or download it. And if you download it, pay for it. You know how <laughs> I am. I, I love supporting all the artists out there. And so buy the music. And in this case, buy the live performance of Live in New York by Mauricio Martinez, which was recorded at 54 Below. And Mauricio, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. 
Thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast and I hope we get to do it again soon. Hey, I'm looking forward to that and can't wait to see what else you are going to be doing because you are the man, you're the jack of all trades. I can tell you that when it comes to entertainment, you've got what it takes and you have fans around the world. And again, I want to thank you for your time today on the program. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can catch all of the replays of our interviews with the top film directors, producers, screenwriters, even Broadway stars like Mauricio Martinez and more on our website at bondoncinema.com. We're also available on YouTube and a dozen audio platforms as well. So I want to thank you for watching and listening. And as for me, well, you'll either see me at the movies, who knows, maybe a Broadway show and even from the red carpet. We'll see you next time.